All right, today's video, I'm gonna show you our setup for small animals. This is what we use for both hogs and lambs or sheep. So obviously this knock box, um, you saw in the other video, was set up for beef, bison, large animals. I'll show you what the setup is for small animals. lock in place. This board right here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to walk this back. Oh, before I forget, I'm also going to tell you how I lost my teeth in this process um, 24 years ago, just a little over 24 years ago. I was working this very slaughter floor and um, I'll tell you the story in a minute, so stick around for that. All right, that's all locked in place. What I'm gonna do is um, I'll go out in the barn and I'll run in my small animal. This will be locked right here. Um, you'll notice this is made out of wood. In a moment, I'm gonna show you why. But we're gonna run the, the animal through the back door here. That slides down, um, then I'll take this and I'll actually squeeze this over. Obviously, reduced mobility gives you that better um, opportunity for that single stun. If you look up in here, you're going to see that I have my Best in Donovan Model ES hog stunner. What this is going to do is going to pass a current from one side to the other, and you put this right behind the animal's ears, and it passes a current through the brain instantaneously rendering them unconscious. Um, very effective method. It's been used thousands and thousands of times here in the slaughterhouse. That's going to stop all brain activity instantly. I can then swing this open right here. Animal rolls out. I'm going to grab my hoist, shacklet, up it goes, and then we do the bloodletting process. That's for pigs. For lamb or sheep, we do use that captive bolt with a reduced charge um, so we can knock them in the head, again, rendering them instantly insensitive to pain. So that's the setup that we use for, for our small animals. The wood is obviously to protect the user because we're using um, electric. Now, that particular um, device is, uh, it just plugs into a regular 110 outlet. Uh, very effective, instantaneous, USDA accepted, works fabulously. Uh, let me show you a little bit about this situation that happened where I lost my curly whites. So, out here in our section of the barn where the animals are housed waiting for water, which again, um, animals that are housed here are going to be food and Food if kept over 24 hours, water available and accessible at all times, low stress. We don't commingle animals from, uh, you know, even different pens. Like we, we only use a limited number of farms. So, so like, for example, the, the, the cows, they've been raised together from young pigs, the same. Sometimes with pigs, when they're in different sizes, they go into different pens. And when they come here, we don't commingle them because they'll begin to try to figure out who's boss and they'll tussle and fight and everything like that. So we don't want any extra stress um, the animals could cause to each other. So we put them in an environment where they feel comfortable. That stress um, will not only be bad for, for the, the animal itself, bad for the meat. So right here, um, we drive the cattle up into this. So like they're, they're gonna move down to a pen here, then they come up here and so when I was a young man, I was working this position right here and I had um, a cow, beef basically, that I had, you know, walked up behind it. It walked up to go into the, um, into the knock box mm -hmm. and we're careful that we don't have any, you know, it's all closed off so they don't balk if they hear a loud noise or, or see something. So I swung this door over right here and, um, and I reached down so if you can imagine the cow was standing uh, two or three feet up there and this gate right here, I, I, 
I went to lean over like this because there's a chain here. And the moment I leaned over, it kicked. So it kicked this gate right, you know, somewhere in here. Wham! And what happened was we've, we've now got some tape on there, but there's angle iron right here. So as I leaned over, it kicked this gate. This gate hit me right here, right on the, on the lip, right underneath my nose. I, I'm, I recall falling back, you know, and I, I put my hands up and I felt with my tongue and it felt like the roof of my mouth had caved down because I could feel something sharp, like clear up in the roof of my mouth. Well, that just happened to be my two front teeth had been driven clear up into the roof of my mouth. Um, the rest of the teeth were gone. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm spitting blood. Things are, and my lip was split wide open. So it just shows you the remarkable power that, you know, a 1200 pound animal has. Now to this day, I wear this catcher's mitt like this, whenever I'm around this gate so that I don't, um, and then, you know, obviously I try to stay clear, uh, until the animal moves up there, but you know, I want that animal to continue moving. So I wear the catcher's mask. Don't worry. I probably got a better set of teeth now than I did it then. Um, just again, another example of how dangerous this occupation is similar to maybe, I don't know, think of dangerous occupations like ranching or, or farm activity. And then obviously like you have like commercial, like crab fishing and things like that. But that's one thing we try to do is, is just reduce stress. But no matter what, over 25 years now, um, with thousands of thousands of large animals move through a facility. Um, this was at the time we did custom processing. So we didn't really know where those animals uh, came from, what their temperament was. They could have been gathered up from a farm where they're violent, things like that. So we try to remain uh, a little more closed loop now with the farms that we work with. So we get animals that have better temperament, but it just goes to show you that it only takes one second and things can go, you know, sideways in a hurry. So back onto the slaughter floor. You've seen now where we do the harvest of the beef. We do the harvest of the bison, the lambs, the sheep. Um, of course, we've done goats, we've done elk. Um, but it all happens right here by the bearded butchers, making sure that we're doing everything up to standard, making improvements as the years go on. Uh, obviously, compliance with the USDA or whatever governing factor. A lot of this equipment is custom. Um, it was fabricated just as, as time went on so that we made sure that we were getting exactly what we wanted. We could put our input and how it was designed. And it's working out great. We're able to harvest animals on this floor, convert livestock to foods that we know exactly where they came from, how they were handled through the entire process. And that's just one more way that we're able to bring to our retail customers a better product. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.